Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this uh, special edition of the Detroit Regional Chamber uh, Teletown Hall series. I'm really pleased to be joined by my colleague, the Vice President of Government Affairs for the, for the Detroit Regional Chamber, Brad Williams. Uh, but most importantly, we have uh, Richard Chuba on the line with us from the Glen Gareth Group. Uh, and we're, the topic of today's Teletown Hall is the latest poll that the Detroit Regional Chamber commissioned with Richard and the Glen Gareth Group. You have a summary uh, of the poll results, but Richard and I and Brad want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, really, truly stunning findings in the statewide poll. This is the first statewide poll that has been done uh, here in Michigan, uh, taking the temperature of people across the state about how the COVID virus has impacted them and their prospects for uh, recovery after uh, the initial crisis is over. Uh, we did this for a handful of reasons. One, we wanted to get uh, an idea of what families were experiencing to put some of these big numbers that we're seeing in some better perspective. Uh, we want to have a sense for what things are like across the state. Uh, many of us in the Detroit Regional Chamber are based here in Southeast Michigan, but we know that uh, the experience of COVID-19 is different in different parts of the state. Uh, but critically, we wanted to ensure that we get a feel for how quickly people think that they, their families, and the state will be able to pull out of the deep economic uh, trough that we're in. Uh, to put a finer highlight on some of these issues, uh, we have both a public health crisis and an economic crisis that is clear, but some sets of numbers that really uh, stood out to me was that 9% uh, of the people surveyed in the statewide poll report that they suspect having the COVID virus. But more importantly, 18% of the people who are working as normal, not working from home, but working as normal, feel that they have the virus, which was a fairly stunning finding from a public health standpoint. From the economic standpoint, 29% report being furloughed, laid off, or unable to work. And 27% of residents who were working prior to the advent of the COVID-19 virus have filed for unemployment benefits. That means that the record high unemployment levels that we were expecting here in Michigan are probably likely to be exceeded. In other words, we're gonna go from record setting levels to breathtaking levels. 28% of all respondents uh, report that putting food on the table is going to be a challenge. And regardless of where you stand on this debate, either keeping, um, oh, we have some back chatter. Hi, uh, can someone, could uh, people uh, who, who have the ability to meet their microphones, could you do that please? Thank you. Um, and then, um, so regardless where you stand, uh, uh, you know, for uh, prolonging the stay at home or uh, moving to work, uh, sooner uh, you have uh, something to stand on. 84% of the respondents uh, expect their households to return uh, to normal within two months. That's a positive sign in terms of being able to recover. Um, and 61% uh, of those people who have been uh, furloughed, laid off, or working from home feel either safe or somewhat safe returning to the workplace. So that means that a big chunk of our employees and our customers are willing to return to the workplace uh, in relatively short period of time. And 60% of people trust their employers to keep them safe. And 57% of people expect Michigan to be back to normal uh, within about six months. So that is kind of some of the high level findings that I found in this report, but the report was done uh, by Richard Shuba and I wanna turn it over to my friend Richard now. Richard. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so this was a 600 sample survey of Michigan residents. Uh, just to let everyone know, it was a little unique because we couldn't bring our staff in to do data collection. This was 50% done by landline telephone automated. And the other 50% was done uh, on cell phones with text messaging uh, very successfully. Uh, it's a unique methodology, but it worked very well for us. Uh, just to go from the start, as Sandy mentioned, we wanted to get a broad image of what households are dealing with in the state. And so we asked residents if they, whether they've been tested or not, if they believe 
that they have contracted COVID, and 9% of residents do. 18% of those who uh, are still working as normal, these are your frontline workers, they believe they have uh, contracted COVID at some point already. Uh, but what's interesting is the age differences here. Uh, if you are 18 to 29, 13% believe they've contracted COVID. In your 30s, 16%. But then the numbers start to drop into single digits. In the 40s, 6%, 50 to 64, 9%. And if you're over 65, only 4%. So those who are on the front lines are reporting uh, at far higher level numbers that they have potentially contracted COVID. Of course, that's not a sure thing. We don't know. It's what they believe. So we asked residents their current work status. And right off the bat, 32% of these res of the respondents said prior to COVID, they were not working. Those are retirees. Those are stay-home individuals. They're students. It's a whole mix of those individuals. So. 19% continue to work uh, as they did uh, uh, prior to the virus. 20% are working, but they're now working at home. And 29% of residents have been furloughed, laid off, or unable to work. If you look at those who are under 30, 42% are furloughed or unemployed. 45% of people in their 30s are furloughed or unemployed. They are demographically, they are disproportionately taking the hit of furloughed and unemployed workers. You know, we have a lot of differences by party. And in this case, 35% uh, of Republican respondents said they had been furloughed or laid off compared to 27% for Democrats and 25% for independents. And, you know, when we look at media markets, uh, it's the Traverse City media market, where 41% of respondents say they furloughed or unemployed. That is the highest. The second is Grand Rapids media market at 34, and the Detroit media market is at 27%, having been furloughed or unemployed. Uh, very interesting differences. It also reflects differences in jobs and the types of jobs and the type of employment in each market. But overall, amongst all those respondents who were working prior to the virus, 42.6% of them are now furloughed, laid off, or unemployed. And we asked those individuals if they've been forced to file for unemployment or not, uh, those 29%. And 64% of them have filed for unemployment, 36 have not filed. Uh, what that means is essentially, we are essentially looking at a state unemployment rate in the range of 27%. So we asked those who said they have been forced to file for unemployment, have they been successful in filing for unemployment? 48% said they have been successful, 37% have not been successful. 15% told us they aren't sure. And the ones having the most trouble filing for unemployment are those under 30. 52% of them have not filed successfully. And men, 42% said they have not filed successfully. We wanted to get a gauge of the financial impact of, that this was having on households. So we asked, uh, we asked household, uh, residents whether the impact was catastrophic, major, minor, or no impact at all. 12% said the impact was ca catastrophic. 35% said the impact was major. So we're at 47% of the state's residents saying the fin financial impact on, on their household is catastrophic or major. Now for residents who have been furloughed or laid off, that grew exponentially. 69% of those individuals said that the financial impact was catastrophic or major. One of the key findings, I think, in this survey, and it's a very sobering finding, is we asked residents, were they worried or not about putting food on their table? And 
28% of the state's residents said they are worried about putting food on the table. And I just wanna pause there because I think we look around and 28% of the people today in Michigan, tonight, are gonna worry about putting food on their table. And it's a startling finding. 54% uh, of those who are furloughed or laid off are worried. 54% of black residents in Michigan are worried about putting food on their table. 45% of those under 30 are worried. 40% in their 30s are worried. And this is one where there are no differences by party. You know, 31% of Democratic voters, 26% of Republican voters, 26% of independent voters are worried about putting food on their table. This virus and the worry it's causing financially is across the board within every, with every political affiliation. 50% of Michigan voters believe, or Michigan residents believe we are already in a recession in Michigan. And that goes up amongst independent and Democratic voters, and it goes down to 42% amongst Republican voters. So we wanted to know how long they thought this financial recovery would take them. 14% uh, of the residents off the top said that their finances hadn't changed. 46% of residents said their finances would return to normal within one month. 24% said they thought it would return to normal in a couple of months. And 15% said the, that their finances would turn to normal in a year. You know, those numbers clearly go up amongst those who have been laid off uh, and it extends out. Uh, so it tells us this isn't an issue that's immediately gonna go away when people start going back to work or the shelter in place orders lifted. So we asked, we asked residents how long it would take them to get back to work. 20% said it would take, they'd go back right away, 39 or 19% in a couple of weeks. So that's a total of 39% saying they're going back in a couple of weeks. 13% said in one month, 25% however said it would take a couple of months to go back to work and 23% just don't know. So again, this drives home the point that when the shelter in place orders are lifted, it's not going to be an immediate shift back to where we were. This is going to be an extended period of people gradually coming back. So when it's time to get back to work, we asked, uh, we asked residents, uh, would they feel safe or not safe going back to work? And by a margin of 61 to 32, they do feel safe going back to work. But you know, it's kind of in the middle. 20% uh, said they felt very safe, 41% somewhat safe. 25% said somewhat unsafe, seven very unsafe. So you know, yes, uh, workers feel safe going back to work right now. But there is some trepidation, rightfully so. There is some concern, and we have to be very cognizant of that, that uh, people are gonna come back to work. They're not gonna be 100% uh, confident that they're safe. We asked if they trusted their workplace to keep them safe when they got there. Uh, by a margin of 60 to 20, uh, residents do feel that their place of work is going, they can trust their place of work to keep them safe. So we asked people how long it would take before Michigan would come back to normal. And I think this is really interesting. 18% uh, said within one month, Michigan would come back to normal. 39% said within six months. And then 36% said it would be a year or more that Michigan would, that it would take Michigan to come back to normal. And I think what that says is Michigan residents are very sober and realistic about what about the road ahead here, that there's not going to be some magic potion that makes everything go back to normal, that this is going to be a more elongated process. And finally, you know, we asked at, at the end uh, if they approved or disapproved of President Trump's handling of COVID-19. Uh, by a margin of 44 to 50, voters disapprove of his handling. And the one thing I will say is these numbers look exactly the same for the president in Michigan as they have for essentially three years.
they have not shifted uh, in, in any way. And in Michigan, independents are, hold, hold all the cards. And right now they disapprove of the president's handling of COVID 40 to 52. And again, that's similar to what we've seen in the past. What is surprising, and I said this this morning, is we are in a rally around the flag moment. And uh, in previous crises, presidents have seen their approvals rise drastically into the 80s. We are not seeing any movement right now in, in President Trump's handling of this crisis. And then finally, uh, we also asked about whether or not voters, uh, residents approve of Governor Whitmer's handling. And by a margin of 57 to 37 plus 20, they do approve of her handling. Uh, very interesting differences in the parties here. Democrats, 89 to eight approve. Republicans disapprove 22 to 70, but even that 22 is somewhat unique uh, to have that, that much of the opposition approve. But again, the independents hold all the cards here and they are plus 21 favorable towards the governor's handling. Very interesting difference in the genders here. Men approve by a margin of 49 to 42, but look at uh, women voters. They approve of Governor Whitmer's handling 64 to 32. And with that, I'll turn it back. Richard, thank you. Great summary. So we're very pleased to bring this uh, data uh, to, to the state. Uh, this is the first time there's been a statewide poll of residents uh, asking how uh, the COVID crisis is impacting them, what their economic situation is, uh, and as Richard uh, discussed uh, at, at good length, uh, what their prospects are or what their opinion is for when they, their families, and the state will, will recover. Uh, and we think these are all incredibly important issues. Uh, I'll just add to the, the political note that uh, Richard ended on. Uh, there is a little interesting stat kind of buried in uh, Richard's great work uh, that said that uh, when it comes to putting food on the table, 31% uh, of the Democrats responded, yes, I'm, uh, I'm concerned about putting food on the table. And 26% of Republicans responded, yes, uh, we're concerned about being put a food on the table. Now, with a poll like this, uh, that's not a that's not a big difference in terms of percentages. Uh, but you know, the the old rule was that you know Republicans were a little bit more affluent, maybe a little bit more financially secure. Uh, we don't know exactly what this means, but it could mean that the uh, the growing strength of the Republican Party in rural areas, where there's maybe a less ability to work from home, uh, maybe the decline of the influence of the Republican Party in the suburban neighborhoods, which are a little bit more professional uh, uh, job classes, a little bit more likelihood to work from home. But I found that a particular kind of interesting tidbit uh, in this in this political story. So let us uh, now uh, turn over to uh, Brad Williams, who will take questions from our from our audience. Sorry, I was on mute. The most commonly uh, said phrase for these last five weeks. Um, for those of you who have questions for Sandy or Richard, I uh, know that there's a, a question uh, a box in your uh, on your computer. Uh, please feel free and, and submit those and I will try and get to as many as I can. First, real quick, Richard, there's a question. What dates did uh, the polling take place for people? Uh the polling took place this past Wednesday evening and all of Thursday through Thursday evening. All these numbers took place directly after, not not by only by coincidence, I might add, uh, directly after the protests in Lansing. Okay, um, Richard, you, when you sent me uh, this poll uh, last week, you suggested uh, that I have a stiff drink. Uh, before I take a look at them. Um, I didn't take your advice. I wish I had. Um, can you explain to the people who are listening in? Um, I think most people understand this is remarkable, but you've been doing this, I think you said, since 1993 uh, earlier today. Can you explain to, can you just put this in context how remarkable some of this data is uh, for someone who's been doing this in Michigan for a long time? Yeah, I mean, we've been polling Michigan since actually 83. And so we were we polled through pretty much every crisis dating back to the early 80s. Uh, and we've never seen numbers like this before. In fact, I went and dug up what Michigan's unemployment rate looked like during the Great Depression. 
and the national unemployment rate was 26%, and the Michigan rate hit a high of 34%. If we are hitting, if, if these are accurate reflections of what's happening in the state at 27%, we are in the range of Great Depression numbers. So I think that provides us some context of what's happening. Yeah, you know, and Brad, I'll, I'll just add to that. I, I think, you know, uh, most of us uh, remember far too well the uh, the Great Recession and how quickly uh, we went uh, into that in uh, the fall of 2008. And I know I, but I'm sure others uh, share the perspective that, you know, we never thought that we would see such a dramatic drop in economic output. And uh, such a quick drop in economic output ever again. Um, certainly that was my uh, feeling uh, going through it, uh, given my past role in the federal government. Uh, but this is unprecedented. I, I think the, the way to describe uh, the economy is, is that we were a sports car traveling at, uh, at a pretty good clip and uh, someone pulled the emergency brake handle. Uh, I mean, it was, it was that fast of a, of, of a drop. And that's why you know, one of the reasons we really wanted to ask these questions about what is your feeling, what is your opinion about how quickly you will be able to get back to work, how comfortable you are to get back to work, and how you think Michigan is going to recover, and what kind of timetable. Because these are all interrelated questions. Uh, we know that you know, our members at the Detroit Regional Chamber are very anxious to get back to work. Uh, they're anxious to get back to work with, you know, the, you know, with reasonable uh, you know, public safety, uh, public health guidelines. Uh, but that's not going to work unless the employees are ready to come back. Uh, and I think that message is is kind of a soft yes, uh, based on Richard's data. Uh, if you combine the, you know, somewhat sure and uh, sure that uh, they're going to be safe, uh, it's it's roughly 60, 61 percent, if I remember correctly. Uh, but that means if you take the somewhat safe, somewhat unsafe, and unsafe, uh, that's 73% of the respondents who are saying that, hey, I've got at least a somewhat of a question to a pretty big question about how safe I am going to be at work. So these are all going to be interrelated uh, pieces of the dance that we're going to have to coordinate to get Michigan back up and running. So we've got a question in here, Richard, asking how this compares to national polls have you seen any other uh any other outfit that has done a similar poll to this whether it's in a state or nation nationwide that you can draw any conclusions yeah we you know nbc national just issued a survey and they do really i mean top-notch surveying out of nbc uh and in terms of the president's handling it was exactly the same numbers michigan is usually reflective of what the nation looks like uh, and I think in this case they were. Uh, we haven't seen anybody, at least I haven't seen anybody, asking these specific questions yet, however, of how people feel about going back to work, how they would feel about being safe in their place of work. I think those are new questions that I certainly haven't seen anywhere. Uh, I, that, that NBC poll that Richard just referred to uh, uh, had a, a, a couple of really interesting things in it. One, it showed that President Trump's approval and disapproval rating is exactly the same today as it was a year ago. Uh, and so uh, President Trump in the last year has obviously gone through the impeachment hearing, uh, and now he's dealing with uh, you know, the largest global pandemic we've seen uh, in a lifetime plus, uh, and his approval and disapproval numbers are exactly where they are. The other data point that I saw, and I can't remember um, uh, where I saw this, but uh, Michigan and Hawaii are the two states now competing for the number one spot uh, for unemployment. We obviously won't know what that is until, uh, until a little bit after this month ends and we're able to get the official unemployment data, but uh, you know, it's gonna be either us or Hawaii. Um, and when you think of all the, you know, uh, the tourism in Hawaii and how that has just basically been shut down uh, to know that we're going through a similar level of economic disruption uh, is really eye-opening. Uh, before I ask the next question, I will explain uh, that this was a statewide survey. There's a question in here about whether this was a statewide survey or just the, the metro region, but we've got a number of questions, Richard, 
about, you know, why didn't we ask this question or why didn't we ask that question? Could you explain why we were kind of limited in what data we could we could ask? Sure. Or what data we could gather, I guess? Sure. Uh, let me just say that typically the surveys that we would do are done by live operator uh, data collection. We bring our staff, our staff would be on the phones walking through lengthy surveys. It's much more in-depth surveying. You can spend much more time on the phone. Uh, we couldn't bring anybody into the office to do this. So we had to find a unique methodology here, which others have used. Uh, it is a combination of automated calling landlines, but also 50% uh, uh, sending text messages. So people answered the survey via text message. So to do that, you have to be brief, you have to be concise, and you can't have more than 20 questions. So I'd like to ask a whole lot more questions, but frankly, it's gonna have to wait until we bring our staff back in. And I, and I will say that we are committed to, uh, we, we've worked with Richard and the Glen Garrett Group uh, for some time now. Um, uh, I, I don't know if it's a, a brand builder for us to say that, you know, the Glen Garrett Group is the official pollster of the Detroit Regional Chamber that might lose Richard for clients. But uh, we are committed to doing uh, a more in-depth poll uh, once uh, Richard is able to bring back his team and ask some of these more detailed questions. Um, Sandy, I'll ask you the next question. Um, you know, there when you ask people uh, uh, how quickly their finances might get back to normal or how quickly they're going to get back to work, there's some sense of optimism, I guess, in uh, the workforce. Do you think that optimism is well-founded or um, should we, uh, particularly the employers we represent, should we temper that optimism somewhat? What do you, how, how would you forecast this out? I know we're living in unprecedented times, but you know, as a, a former director of the, or head of the SBA, can you kind of put your, your professional uh, previous life hat on and, and kind of think through this in, you know, in the context of the last big economic event we left through? Yeah, well, I mean, the, no truer words have uh, have ever been spoken that these are unprecedented times. It's almost uh, too much of a cliche because uh, no one alive has really been through anything like this uh, unless you were running a business back in uh, 1819 during the Spanish flu. So uh, we just don't know. Uh, the, the tricky thing here is that this is national. So even if Michigan is able to uh, bring back a chunk of its economy over the next uh, couple months, uh, that doesn't mean that the nation's economy is, is going to uh, come up. For example, uh, we are experiencing, uh, from everything we know, basically the peak cases in Michigan right now. States like Missouri, uh, Georgia, Texas uh, are not going to experience their peak for another month. At least that's what the, the latest uh, uh, public health officials are expecting. So right when we're starting to ease back into work, there's other states that might have to ratchet up their restrictions a little bit more based on what they're seeing on the ground uh, health-wise. The other piece of it is, is that it's not just national, it's international. So what are our public, uh, what are our international partners? If they're a part supplier, or if they're a customer, or if it's a produce supply chain, you know, where are all these other products coming from? So uh, we're not gonna be able to flip a switch, uh, even if we could from a public health standpoint, and I don't think anyone responsible suggesting that on such and such a date, we just flip a switch and go back to normal. Uh, every business owner, every business leader I've spoken to says, listen, we know that we're gonna have to, you know, kind of ease back into this. We're gonna have to use PPE. We're gonna have to change our business processes. We know the customers aren't gonna come back right away, but we just, we do need to get started. So I don't know, Brad, that's a long-winded way, winded way of saying, I just don't know how this is going to unfold. The good news, though, is that A, people are interested in getting back to work. B, employers are very anxious to get started, and I hear that all the time, and you know, we're, we're taking that message uh, to our public officials. And C, we had a strong economy going into this. So there's a lot of signs saying that you know this could be a pretty, uh, V-shaped recovery as opposed to a L or U-shaped recovery. Yeah, that's one of the uh, the optimistic signs I'm holding on to is that the fundamentals uh, coming into it were a lot stronger than they were 
uh, back a decade ago uh, when we were when we were going into a recession. So hopefully we'll be able to come back a lot stronger. We're up against uh, our half hour time limit. So I will uh, end the questioning right here, but know uh, that uh, this session, like all of our sessions, will be available uh, on the Chamber website. That's DetroitChamber.com slash COVID-19. And if you really want to get in depth on the numbers uh, on this poll, uh, you can see the website uh, on your uh, computer screen right now. It's DetroitChamber.com slash MICOVID poll. Uh, there is a wealth of interesting information in here. I know we went through a lot of it very quickly, uh, but there is a lot of information here uh, that um, you can really dig into. Uh, like Richard said, I uh, don't recommend it necessarily without a stiff drink, though you've already gotten the shock value out of it, so you may may be able to wade in uh, sober uh, a little bit easier than the rest of us. Uh, but appreciate uh, everyone joining us today, uh, and we look forward to uh, having you join us again uh, later on this week, uh, the whole lineup of Teletown Halls, again, is available on the Chamber website at DetroitChamber.com slash COVID-19.